Hello, it's Annabelle Beckwith, trainer, facilitator and coach and um, uh, joining you on a very sunny afternoon. Uh, do you know what? I've just had a thing up the top that says failed network connection. So I was slightly thrown a moment there uh, because I thought maybe I'm not talking to anybody at all. But I'm just going to continue on the basis that I am. So um, today I'm going to be looking at confident body language, uh, something I was going to do the other day, but now technology is actually working for me, I hope, and uh, we'll be able to uh, be able to cover this subject area. Um, if you are able to watch live, then please put hashtag live in the comments box there. If you're picking it up a little bit later on, then um, please put hashtag replay. Um, so... Uh, <clears throat> Let's dive on in, shall we? There's three things that I want to uh, look at with you today. And uh, one is uh, becoming a student of body language and actually being able to observe quite closely what other people are doing. And there's several reasons for that. Oh, hi, Judy. Thanks for joining me. Um, one is the next one is bringing our own body language from the subconscious to the conscious. And the third thing is what is it that confident people actually do and how can we how can we emulate them? How can we bring some uh, positive and confident body language vocabulary into our own armory and be able to deploy it at will, even in situations where we might not be feeling that confident? Because, of course, nobody knows what's going on in our heads. They are only responding and reacting to what they see us do. Uh, so we can, to an extent, fake it till we make it. So, uh, well, the first thing before I even start is to say what a fascinating subject area this is. Uh, we could we could talk about it for days. In fact, I've run programs and courses and workshops where we have looked at it for two or three days and focused on on, on really, really specific things. So a huge subject area. However, as human beings, we are already really tuned into body language anyway, whether we're aware of it or not. We are consistently and constantly picking up non-verbal signals from other people. So we can all do this. There's no mystery to it. We can all do it. We just need to tune in to people's non-verbal communications on a different level and be a bit more self-aware about uh, the messages and the signals that we are indeed putting out. So let's let's look at that first uh, that first area, becoming a student of other people in terms of, uh, of their body language. Quite often when I'm delivering a, a training workshop and we're focusing on this area, um, we'll be talking about body language and people will say, oh, there's just some people that just so they're just so confident. And that's an interesting one, because the question that needs to be asked is, well, why are they confident? Oh, they're just confident. One of the things we really need to do is, is focus on what exactly is that person doing? What did they do? Oh, hi, Joel. Thanks for stopping by. What is that person doing? Oh, and Fran, hi. What is that person doing in order to come across as confident? And there will be specific things. Oh, Suzanne as well. Hello. Um, so what is that person specifically doing in order to come across as confident? And there will be particular things. Watch really closely. Watch confident people and see what are they doing. There will be something in the way in which they carry themselves, the way in which they move, which conveys presence and authority. And I'm actually going to look at some of those things a little bit later on in this session, but start to look really closely. It's, it's, it's useful to go, oh, that person's so confident. It's more useful to think, I wonder why that is. Why do they look so confident? And let's face it, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I've known people who are talking utter nonsense, but they do so with such physical authority and gravitas that I'm left doubting my own grasp of reality, basically. How do they do that? What is it that they're, that they're doing? Oh, hello, Amy. Um, so um, a few people joining now. If you've got questions or comments or, or, or anything on this subject of, of body language or observations that you yourself have made, about what is confident body language, or indeed what what do you think can come across as not confident body language, then put your comments in the, in the box below. I'll see them as they come up on the screen. So if you've got questions, I can just take them as we go along. So become a student, watch other people who are confident and think, what is it they're doing specifically that I can perhaps emulate? There's, um, it's also worth thinking, 
who comes across as not very confident. You know those people who you know know what they're talking about. You, you know that they are really capable, but for some reason there's, again, something in the way that they move and they carry themselves actually something in their tone of, of voice, but that's another subject. Um, there, there's something that, that means that they don't seem to land their message with the authority that it deserves. It's really useful to, to, to pull these things apart. And, and consider what's going on here. As you do look at other people's body language, there's, there's a couple of things. Don't pick single gestures and just focus on that. Look at clusters and groups of body language. So, for example, the old favourite is, you know, somebody sitting with their arms folded. And it's easy to think to yourself, oh, that means they're closed to what I'm saying. They're closed and cut off. Well, indeed they might be, but they might just be comfortable sitting like that. They might be sitting under an air conditioning vent or something and they're a bit cold. If they are sitting like that and looking around the room, checking their watch, you know, if there's a cluster of gestures, then that might indeed indicate to you that maybe they're not fully on board with your point. Or if they've been sitting forward and nodding and showing positive body language signals and listening to what you're saying, and suddenly they move back and close their arms, that may be a signal to you that there's something that you've said that has put some distance between you and them. The question then becomes, well, what do you do if you see that happening? You see somebody withdrawing or frowning or looking a little bit uncertain about what you've said. My recommendation is to subtly call it out. Uh, I used to work in an environment where there was a there was a weekly meeting that I would go to occasionally and it was known to be quite an aggressive meeting and, and uh, the lady who chaired the meeting, um, <clears throat> the, whole, the whole group of people around the table seemed to be openly hostile to anybody who came in for outside to present them with something or to discuss or whatever. Um, and what would happen is that I would be standing at the front ready to present something from the marketing team and she would literally push herself back from the table and roll her eyes. Now it was a very subtle gesture, but what it was what it was saying to everybody assembled around the table was Annabelle's about to talk a load of nonsense. Oh, here we go again. It almost gave permission to everybody else to switch off as well. And at first I was thinking, oh no, she's 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 moving away. I can see them slipping away, and like a, a bad actor, I would be desperately trying to get them back. And after a while I thought to myself, I'm going to diplomatically and politely call it out. So the next time she uh, uh, she did that, um, I just said, oh, uh, and if you've got any questions, Jane, I can see that you're uh, you know, a little con concerned about what I might be about to say here, but if you do have questions, I'll address that at the end. And no, 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 that's fine. If you see somebody switching off, that's the time to say, I can see that you're a little bit, oh, hi, Jason. I can see that you're a little bit hesitant about this. What, what is it that's that's holding you back? And often times people go, no, no, that's fine. It's just my face. And, some, and sometimes that is the case. Or they'll say, well, well yes, I'll... and they'll come up with a question that was unspoken. So diplomatically call it out. Um, bear in mind also that there are going to be cultural differences. This is a statement of the obvious, but sometimes we forget it because we're so used to our own cultural paradigms. There are going to be cultural differences around the world. So eye contact, for example, in, in Western Europe, North, you know, in many cultures, the ability to maintain eye contact is seen as an indication of being trustworthy. In other countries, in some African cultures, for example, maintaining eye contact is on eye contact is seen as disrespectful. So you would look down where you can just begin to imagine the confusion and the misunderstanding that might take place there. So do bear that in mind that body language will differ uh, in different areas, um, different areas of the world. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so as become a student of other people in terms of uh, of their body language, you'll be able to learn. Oh, I must remember to try that tip. Or right, let me note to self: never do that because I will look really nervous even if I do know what I'm talking about. But from from a business point of view, being able to and it's not difficult. You just need to focus on doing it. Being able to tune in to what somebody else is not saying but they are physically, is massively, massively useful. Um, and we can all do it. We can all do it. We really can. So um, on one, uh, Judy's just written, oh, interesting, I have to say, I love this subject area. It's so fascinating to me. I will have to keep an eye on the time 
so that I don't just go rambling on into the evening. Uh, but um, I must just tell you about this project I was involved in. It was a few years ago now and it was a company in the finance sector and, and basically a team of them had been working to put together a proposal <clears throat> to take to another large organisation, Never, they wouldn't tell me who it was, um, to pitch for this other organisation's pension scheme for all of its employees across the country or internationally, I wasn't quite sure. Now the feedback that this team had received beforehand was that uh, it, this company and the other company, because of the level and the scope of the project involved, they were all much of a muchness. Everyone's offering, by and large, the same sort of uh, sort of product. But this particular group of people, they just came across as a group. They didn't really came, come across as a team. So I was asked to go in and work with them on how would they physically, in terms of their body language, come across as a team. And it was really interesting to observe because uh, I'd set the room up when people walked in, I set just some chairs up in a circle around the room and people randomly came in and they would sit down and then somebody else would come in. And this is, uh, there's nothing difficult about this. There's nothing difficult about this, but because it's common sense if you think about it. So somebody would come in and sit down and then somebody else would come in and sit down. And if they knew that person, they would sit next to them. If they didn't know them, they might go and faff around and pour themselves a glass of water or something like this. But you started to see, just as people gathered in the circle, you could see where the different teams were. So that was one observation. There was also, <clears throat> as people walked in, you could see other people's reaction to the people who had just walked in. And this was a little bit confusing to me because there were two men in particular that people seemed to defer to very, very subtly. But people would, in the moment of greeting these individuals, they would lower their heads very slightly or look down. It was a very, very small gesture. But once you once once you see it, you can't unsee it. So in terms of the introductions, I said to the group, well, great to meet you all. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit confused here because John, when you came in, I thought, oh, you're the group leader. But now that Tim's come in, I'm thinking, well, you, you're also the group leader. And they were going, oh, how did you know? Because John's been leading this project when we were re working remotely in different areas of the country, but we've been together for the last fortnight. And now Tim's taken over. Now that, how did you know? And I was going, aha, it's, you, you, was, you were leaking those body language signals. Um, so, and, and that's the thing, if you, if you can tune into this in a business context, you will be able to pick up on buying signals from potential clients or reluctance to buy signals. You'll pick up on different moods and attitudes of your staff. So you'll be able to tell whether somebody is fully on board with something or whether they're, you know, a little bit off color today or something like that. You can just see it because even though they might not be articulating it, they are leaking those signals all over the place. So it's really, really useful to, to become an observer in other people. Joel has said, good information on the eye contact of different cultures, Annabelle. Well, thanks for that, Joel. And it's potentially, potentially it's a, it could be a minefield. Um, so it is really important to be aware of that. And just, you know, do, do a little bit of research online. If you're going to be working overseas, or you're going to be working with international groups, find out where they're from. And, um, just check what are some of the cultural paradigms uh, what are the, some of the cultural paradigms there just so that this doesn't become an area of misunderstanding um, because it can do again another example I was working on um, it was a, a training program with a company based here in Scotland and there were a lot of their colleagues coming across from India to to, to work on this particular project and, and one woman, I was doing some cultural training, but this one lady had met the Indian contingent before she had uh, undertaken the training. And she was saying, well, you know, this, this, this guy walked in and he shook hands with my male colleagues. He walked straight past me and onto this, well, that's how he, you know, and she was quite offended by this. And so I said, well, did you extend your hand to shake hands? And she said, well, Actually, I'm not sure that I did. I said, well, there's the thing, because actually in Middle Eastern and, and some Asian cultures, um, a man will wait for a woman to initiate some kind of contact. Otherwise, he will respectfully not shake hands in case in case she doesn't want to. So what a misunderstanding. She's offended that he's not shaken hands. He is thinking he's been polite 
because she obviously doesn't want us to shake hands because she's not put her hand forward. I'm being polite and suddenly she's she's all huffy with me. So the, the, the cultural thing, really, really important if you're working internationally. So <clears throat> let's move on to the next, to the, the second of my three things, which was, looks at notes, thinking about our own body language, because if we're able to read other people, guess what? Other people are reading us and they're doing so all of the time because we're all leaking signals all the time. Um, but our, our own body language and the first thing is to, to bring us, ourselves, the way in which we're non-verbally communicating, bring it from the subconscious to the conscious, become aware of it. Um, sometimes we're just not aware of, of little foibles that we might have. A, a little while ago, um, I, when, I, when I was talking to people or delivering training or something, I think I was trying to say, and so the point here is, and, and I kept doing this, I had no idea I was doing it. And my daughter said, Mum, what's with the box thing? And I thought, oh, look at that. I've got absolutely no idea. I didn't even realise that I was doing it. So thereafter, when I was in the training room or elsewhere and I started, it was like, oh, and then uh, do something else, do something else instead. But we will all have things that we do, um, perhaps especially when we're a little bit nervous. So um, we might, you know, you know, ladies might sort of tuck their hair nervously behind their ear. Uh, men might, you know, have their hands in their pockets and be jangling keys or something like that. Or... You know, fidgeting with a with a with a ring finger or something, there will be a gesture that that might be betraying our mood. So bring it from the subconscious to um, to the conscious. A couple of ways to do this is perhaps particularly if you're in a business environment or otherwise, and you're being asked to give a presentation, is to actually film yourself giving that presentation or part of it. Get a friend to do it or whatever. Do it on your phone, and then watch it back. I know it. It's a bit brutal and lots of people are going, oh no, I can't bear to see myself on camera. You're as well to see yourself on camera first uh, before everybody else sees you in real life. And then you might say to yourself, oh yeah, look at that, I'm sort of swaying from side to side or I'm pacing up and down or I can't stop touching my face and that makes me look really nervous or something. So bring it from the subconscious to the conscious and become aware of what your body language patterns actually uh, actually are. Um, so film yourself. You could also ask friends and family and, and, and simply say, is there something that I do that, that, that might be undermining my message here? Because I want to come across as somebody knowledgeable, somebody of authority. Is this what's happening or, or is it not? And, and get some feedback, uh, get some feedback from them because they'll, they'll be able to tell you things that you're possibly not aware of uh, in yourself. So that self-awareness piece is the, is the second uh, big thing. The third thing, of course, is well, what do we do about any of this? And kind of linked to that first point when I said, well, what is it that confident people are doing? What you will find is if, if you observe confident people, they take the space and the time that they need. So in terms of their posture, they're just filling the space that their body naturally takes. If you look at somebody who's not very confident, you will find that they may be hunched over or they're making themselves smaller in some way, or they might be you know, with their feet crossed and angling their body away from the person they're speaking to or towards the door or something. They're physically making themselves smaller than they actually are. So take the time and space that you need. Be aware of your shoulders expanding and of taking the space that you need. Conversely, of course, you know, as somebody might be, you know, the alpha over the wall, over the top, alpha male gestures, hands on hips, the whole man spread thing where somebody is taking up too much space and that can come across as arrogant and overbearing. So again, if you're giving a presentation and you just, you happen to be comfortable standing with your hands on your hips, just be aware of the signal that that might be giving to your audience. Take the, take the space Take the space that you need. Oh, hi, Sarah. Thanks for joining. Um, take the space that you need and take the time that you need as well. Again, with confident people, you will find that their gestures are measured. They're not rushing. A nervous person is like, hi, um, OK, uh, I've only got a few minutes, so um, oh, let's be quick. They tend to faff around. The gestures are sharp and quick. And it looks like they can't wait to finish whatever it is they're saying or doing and just get away. 
So, so be aware of these things. If in terms of you getting feedback to, from friends and family um, that, you, that you do some of these, uh, these things, <clears throat> then the key thing to focus on is not, oh, don't flap my hands around, don't flap my hands around. Because as soon as you say that, you're focusing on flapping your hands and it's almost inevitable that it's going to, um, going to happen. Nadja, just heading out, so can't watch live. Oh, well, but catch the replay. Oh, brilliant, thanks. I'll see you there then, Nadja. Thanks for stopping by to say. So, so yeah, if you're aware that you have something that's not particularly useful in terms of a body language gesture, focus on doing something else instead. So rather than thinking, don't flap about, don't flap about, think, hands cupped in front of me. And that's actually quite useful in terms of almost like a rescue position because our hands will take on a life of their own. Before you know it, you're waving them around like a traffic warden or something. And you're thinking, oh no, there they go again. And it's like, and, and so just gently, not a kind of, oh, subtlety is required, but just gently bring them down into the, the rescue position of hands cupped in front of me. Something, something calm, something authoritative. And actually, as an aside, a really good author on body language is Alan Pease. If you look him up, he's, there's YouTube videos, there's books. Um, very, very knowledgeable on this subject area uh, and actually entertaining to read as well, which is also very, um, very useful. So take the time and the space that you need. Um, again, with taking the, um, the, the, the time that you, you need, if your gestures are too slow, then people can become impatient. It's like, what is that? Um, so again, measured time and space. The time and the space is yours when you're speaking. And then you obviously let the other person speak for, for their allocated time and taking the space that, that, that they need. Um, and focus on that time and space. So if you do find yourself again in a position where, where you're feeling a little bit nervous about something, remember nobody knows what's going on in your head. They will only guess what is going on in your head by what they see in front of them. So start to, I know this sounds ridiculous, but give it a shot if you're, in a, if, if you're going to be in a situation where, where you think you might be nervous, where you might be giving a presentation or going to a networking event and I really I used to absolutely hate those I would just scuttle around the out of the the outside of the room and make straight for the glasses of wine and, and just it was just an awkward situation in those situations think to yourself right loosen your shoulders space and time space and time it doesn't matter how nervous you might be space and time and think about that 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 rescue posture where you're standing quite calmly upright an open gesture, hands cupped in front of you, just for a moment or two until you gather your thoughts and then you're able to continue with, with, uh, with the conversation. Um, so just a, a third thing in terms of confident body language is of course that it must be congruent with what you're saying in order to put across a positive message. So there's a bit of a tie in here with voice um, because uh, I think I might do another, if you, would you like, should I do another? Uh, another Facebook Live on, on voice and having a voice that conveys authority, because there are tones of voice that lend themselves to authority. There are some that, um, that, that don't really. And there's things that you can do to make sure that you sound authoritative. So um, if you would be interested in that, put hashtag voice in the comments box and I'll do something on that. Um, but your voice and your uh, the content of what you're saying and indeed your body language must must all match up. Um, I remember going to an event that was a local event to me here years ago and it was for the creative industries and some uh, some bigwig had come down from uh, fr from Glasgow to, to speak to the assembled group um, about the launch of this project and he literally kind of leaned on the lectern and went well this is a very exciting day for mm, name of company uh, this is a very exciting day for Ayrshire. And we thought, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, really. Um, because everything, in, in not just in his voice, which sounded like he would rather be anywhere else on the planet, but also in the way that he was like leaning on the lectern, so oh, he was burdened with the weight of the world, did not convey confidence in the project, that he actually cared about the project at all. No sense of enthusiasm. It was like, who is this guy? Why is it like just, just, you know, the message wasn't congruent. So make sure that there is a match between your voice, your body language and the message that you're looking to put across. 
so just quick time check here time check um so that's been about sort of 25 minutes or so so i'm i'm going to uh, going to draw it to a close now but just again a quick recap on those three th key things about confident body language one become a student watch other people because you can pick up so much about what's going on in a group by by watching their body language and in fact when i've been working overseas in some groups where there's this international group speaking different languages when they're going off to do group work i've said you know don't feel it necessary to speak in english speak in turkish or arabic or you know whatever languages that they're, that they're using and you can actually tell the mood of the conversation even though i don't speak turkish or arabic you can tell the mood of the conversation by the body language and the gestures of the people involved in that conversation start to watch what do you notice not only is it fascinating a it will tell you a lot about what's going on in that conversation that's not perhaps being articulated and B, you can learn what to do from confident people and what not to do from people who are undermining their message by showing negative or, or passive unconfident traits. Um, the second thing is bring your own body language and, and your own traits from the subconscious to the conscious so that you're aware of them. What is it that you're doing? And the third thing is to remember confident people take space and time. Take the space and the time that you need. Make sure that your upper body position in particular is, is, is relaxed, that your, your, your feet are aligned, that you, you're in a relaxed and upright and open posture because that does convey confidence. Um, so that's all from me just now. Thank you so much to those who have um, joined me live and, and also to those who have yet to watch this, but we'll have a look at the replay. I will be back soon and um, I will move on to a different subject area or if you'd like to do something about voice and having a voice that lends authority to what you are saying then please put a hashtag voice in the boxes below. Otherwise I shall wish you a very good evening and I shall speak to you soon. Bye for now.